Good day, my name is Tomas and you're watching Casual DIY channel. Today we'll start building my workbench. As you can see behind me, um, I've got a small workbench that's not really suitable for any of my needs at all, so it's time to build something new. The workbench needs to be one and all solution. So basically in the middle I'll have a place for my mitre saw with a flip top. Um, so where the mitre saw is not in use, I'll just have a massive work area. Underneath my main workbench there will be space for two power tools that I uh, use quite often. The first one is a jointer and the other one is a thicknesser. I've actually got a clever idea how to store both of those tools underneath the bench and when they are actually out I'm able to use them on a reasonable level not actually bending or being on my knees. The workbench will also have a back to it going right up to the uh, ceiling, uh, right up to the joist of my workshop. That will give me an ability to create some clever storage there as well. So make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet, because over the course of a few weeks, all these projects will come together. But let's start with the basic workbench. For the frame of the workbench, I'm going to be using some 2x4s and some normal studs as well. First of all uh, I'm going to be cutting out a few pieces for the legs and we're going to have two different types of legs. Two will be made from the studs and the other two will be made from 2x4s. Um, later on I'll explain why we're using two different types. To make the job a little bit easier I'm actually using the first cutout piece um, as a guide to cut out the rest of the pieces. Uh, this makes sure uh, the cuts are accurate. So as you can see all the lumber for the legs is now cut to size and now I'm just going to continue using my mitre saw to cut out the rest of the lumber for the base for the top of the workbench. And in this case again I'm just using 2x4s uh, cutting them to the right sizes. As all my pieces of timber are now cut to the right size, I'm going to put everything together. So for this build I'm only going to be using butt joints and nothing major here. Um, some pocket holes to hold everything together. I'm not going to be using any glue because I need to be able to take it down apart quite easily. And that's the method I choose. Uh, it should hold up together. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to be using pocket holes and some normal butt joints to I uh, put the whole frame together. I'm using my uh, katsu jig to cut out all the packet holes. If you're interested in it, I'm gonna leave a link down below. Um, you can check it out. I think it's about 30 quid, maybe 36. Uh, definitely worth it. A lot cheaper than the Craig one, and it does the job. Now I'm just using a square and some clamps to make sure the whole construction will be basically square. For extra strength I'm just going to be using some normal screws going in the uh, front of the joint. As you can see I'm pre drilling some holes, uh, countersinking them and driving the screws. As, as you can see I'm um, just putting together the frame for the top um, to which the, the legs and the top of the whole bench will be attached to. Um, so exactly the same technique, pocket holes and normal screws um, for the butt joints. And now I'm just attaching everything together. <laughs> In this case I didn't actually have and screws that would be long enough to go through the leg and the frame um, of the top uh, so I had to use a, a larger drill bit um, to make some holes uh, so that the, basically the screws would go uh, deeper and 
Now as you can see I'm attaching the middle legs and obviously they are made out of 2x4s and a lot wider and as you probably can see now um, they're sticking out a little bit out of the frame and that's exactly what we need um, when we're going to be installing the flip top that, um, that will come in quite handy for extra stability I'm adding some horizontal supports at the back and one at the front of the whole uh, construction And now it's time to install the casters and um, there's eight in total and they're rated 200 kilograms each so i think that would be plenty um, for what i need this bench to be and uh, basically all the tools are going to be on them um, that's i think that's that, that's plenty the two outer legs are made out of studs which means they're basically not wide enough uh, to secure the casters uh, so what I'm doing, I'm just um, installing a uh, strip of, uh, of wood that will um, give me the ability to install the casters correctly and obviously it will give a bit of stability to the whole construction And as I mentioned before, I'm installing the horizontal support um, at the front of, of the whole construction, but only in the middle bit where the flip top is going to go for uh, my miter saw. The other two sides, they need to uh, be left empty. Okay guys, so as you can see, uh, the frame of the bench has come along nicely. Uh, we've installed all the braces around uh, the workbench so it's nice and sturdy but I made a small design error. So basically these legs over here in the middle are wider uh, because they're gonna accommodate the rotating um, mechanism um, for the flip top basically, yeah? So I've got something to rest it on uh, so it's a good nice support uh, for my mitre so. But obviously <laughs> at the front, the two by fours, I cut them a bit too short so I'm missing um, a little bit over here I wanted it to be actually flush with the end of the leg so basically these front two beams they need to be a little bit wider and um, so we won't be able to see that gap later on uh, yeah so I need to redo that now and as you can see I've put the new boards in mistake has been corrected before putting the top um, on this bench, what I want to do is actually make some holes in the front um, of this board. So I've got some clamping space. So basically I don't have to go all the way down here, but I will have a clamping place, a clamping hole over here, and then I can clamp uh, whatever I need to the workbench itself. holes are uh, cut out on both sides and before I cut the uh, the tops to size I'm actually going to go and sand it a little bit but um, you know there's no point of recording that because it's not interesting at all so I shall see in a just a second where we're going to be installing the top so as you can see uh, the sheet of plywood is now cut to the right size to the size of my bench and that will be it for this part of the build Obviously, in the next part, we're going to be uh, tackling the flip top, uh, this section here where I'm actually sitting for my uh, miter saw. And later on, obviously, we're going to be doing the back, some storage solutions. 
and in later videos we're going to be putting some shelves underneath here and obviously the two cards with my uh, with my thicknesser and with my jointer so make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss those videos but as i said for now uh, that's it guys and i hope to see you on my next woodworking adventure till then take care